Is Mercedes heavily sandbagging, and could they potentially pose an unsuspected threat against the dominant RB20? Or are people simply overestimating the capabilities of the W15 too early on? After Bahrain testing, there were rumours in the paddock that Mercedes were much quicker than what they showed over the three days of testing, and that there were also indications that the W15 could be faster than the Ferrari in race trim. During the long-run programmes set by the teams in testing, Mercedes had the slowest average top speed being nearly 12 km per hour, slower than the fastest speed set by the Ferrari. Also from this diagram which shows the fastest top speed in KPH by the teams during their quickest lap of testing, Mercedes had the second slowest speed being 6 kph slower than that of the RB20. Now there's three potential perspectives that you can take from this information. The first perspective is that Mercedes was sandbagging as they were potentially running with significant fuel in the car, which in turn adds to the weight of the car, which in turn decreases the top speed and slows down the lap times. The second perspective is that Mercedes were again sandbagging, but that this was because they were running with turned down engine modes. This perspective would therefore explain the W15 recording relatively slower top speeds in comparison to the competition. The third perspective is slightly more pessimistic, and it is that the Mercedes is just fundamentally slow and aerodynamically inefficient, as it is probably is suffering from greater drag on the car, just like what we saw on the W13 and W14. In my opinion, I do not think that the slow speed of the W15 that we saw in testing was down to the car being aerodynamically inefficient, as they should have eradicated this problem through their change in the design philosophy. The reason why Mercedes were so slow in 2022 and 2023 is that their side podless design essentially hindered the peak performance that they could extract from the engine as they had to repackage the entire car to fit the flawed design which compromised their engine's performance. However, this shouldn't really be the case this season, as they have obviously changed their concept. As for Mercedes, possibly running higher fuel loads and lowering the engine modes as a reason for the slower speeds, this is obviously going to be a factor, as teams typically don't run flat out in testing, so yes, this most likely has a part to play in it. However, I am not for one second jumping on the supposed hype train that Mercedes were drastically sandbagging, and that they might turn up to Bahrain next week, challenging the Red Bulls. The likely case is that Mercedes will be relatively close with the Ferrari, and that they might have a slight edge over them in race pace while Ferrari have the slight edge in qualifying. Mercedes could possibly also comfortably solidify themselves as the second fastest team, but when you take a step back and assess the situation as a whole, all of this speculation is futile if Red Bull are going to go on and dominate yet another season. Nobody really cares about the battle for second, so unless Mercedes can actually fight at the very front, I'm completely indifferent about the rumours of Mercedes sandbagging with the W15. Hopefully I'm wrong. Has this new car given you um, a spring in your step with everybody? Uh, well, I think um, we've had a better day today. We definitely found, found a better way forward with it today. And, uh, and we're reasonably pleased with the pace it was showing at, um, uh, at the end of today. When we were all running together, there was a McLaren and a Ferrari yeah. going around the track at the same time on the same tyres. We, we were looking all right.